Hello, my name is Ilona. Today it's Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. And I just want to talk about an article I read on um, the uh, page of Simon Parks. It's from um, Richard Pritula. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's called The Sleeper. And uh, he's uh, talking about the sleepers, the people that are not aware. And he has some interesting points. And I think what Simon meant with that, because the point of the article is that it has no uh, value to let people suffer more, especially unaware people, because they are not going to wake up that way. And I've noticed in his video, some of them, I just watched small parts that um, I think maybe I'm interpreted wrongly, but he's a bit frustrated with that. It's taking so long and really the people that are suffering are the people that are aware because the people that are unaware are not even seeing the information and are still not waking up. But it's a very interesting article. I just want to mention a few things. Let's see. First part of the sleeper. Using the term sleeper suggests that the user has no concept of the state of mind of the unaware person. A person is unaware because the new information is too anxiety provoking to reach their awareness, that is their higher conscious and intellectual levels of functioning. They have not developed the mental capacity to tolerate the anxiety. It does not emerge into consciousness for them to be able to assess the new information. It is treated as dangerous and life-threatening. They defend against it with negation, blocking it. This occurs beneath consciousness and all that presents consciously from them is no or denial of the new information, avoidance, mocking and ridicule of it and any who speak it. A group of similar unaware people reinforce this resistance. It is the reality for that group. So it's very interesting that he's mentioning that the main part why people are not processing this new information is because of fear. And I do believe that we are in, you know, for a long time, the dark energies have been using fear as a tool to keep us in a certain place. It is in a way perfect to manipulate people. So the people that are unaware are at a base level extremely uh, fearful. And they believe what the media is telling them, what the fake news is telling them. So all the information that is contrary to what they believe or what they hold on to is seen as a threat. And <clears throat> sorry about that. They won't even notice that. It's a very unconscious decision. So they hear something, they won't even listen to it. They will mock it. They will reject it. Uh, there are lots of things people are dealing with. I hear it. All the time family members loved ones they don't even want to hear it they ridicule people it's it's really very painful to watch and uh, in a way it's not that I've been ridiculed but I do have people or members in my family that are like completely opposed to where I stand for and it can be tough it's it's very difficult to at least deal with, you know, with each other in a respectful way. That's very important. But there are, if, uh, you know, a lot of people are telling me and uh, sending me messages that they've been thrown out of their family, even their children are against them. It's, it's a horrible situation. But these people are very unaware. And the point of the article is that these unaware people are following their fear in a way and they need safety. So the dark energies use the media and fake news to create uh, some like a threat, what they've been using for a very long time. It's the same principle. They create a problem, which of course they're not mentioning they're the ones creating. So there's going to be a reaction. People want them to fix it and then they come with a solution. And of course the solution is in a certain direction that the dark energies want you to go. So in this case, the past two and a half years, there's been a threat going on and there was the solution, of course, that was the sting. So a lot of people, they, they because they're so afraid and they are, see this threat and they hear that, well, you're going to be safe when you get the sting. They will follow that. They're like, oh, we should do that. Then we'll be safe. They believe that and it eases their anxiety because they don't really know how to deal with that. That's 
pretty much the issue here. The main issue is that people do not really know how to deal with their emotions like anxiety, like fear. So that's a perfect way to manipulate people. So if you come with information that tells them, you know, there's something wrong with the sting. So in a way there is a threat according to them and that the sting gives them safety. And now you are taking away their safety at their sting. There's something wrong with that. And a lot of people have gotten the stings. So you're telling them that there's something wrong with that. They won't want to process that because it will be too scary for them. Very important. It will be like, uh, telling them something and they're like, no, 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 it's not happening. No, don't want to hear it. That's not true because they cannot, uh, how to say this, deal with the anxiety that will come up with that. If they're really going to think through about this and like, okay, there's something wrong with the stings, then suddenly they have an even bigger threat. And mention at the end of the article, it is a possibility that there's a large group that will buckle under the uh, pressure if they do uh, finally start to understand what's going on. And I'm not just talking about the sting. Uh, let's see. Um, if they perceive more and more people around them dying and they link this to the sting, what will they do? If this increases the threat level to register as a danger and overcomes their defenses, they may panic or decompensate in other ways. Um, pain and suffering break down the individual's defense mechanisms against anxiety, anxiety, but this leaves them unprotecting from their extreme anxiety they have in themselves to begin with. The un unaware are using their defense mental mechanisms to the full. If faced with further extreme pressure, they are likely to be overwhelmed. This may produce cracking or break them. This may be expressed as extremes of physical or emotional violence, addiction, avoidance, attack, increased illness and illness behavior. So there's the end. The aim of preventing this happening by prolonged the suffering to wake them up may result in the opposite effect to that desired. I think that's the point of the article that uh, what Simon Park was trying to make and what I've mentioned before in this video is that there's no point in continuing this suffering because really the people that are awake are suffering and not the unaware are not waking up. I fully understand what he's talking about that. And I understand the frustration of that, like especially what's going on now with the uh, energy prices, the prices for food, things are happening. But I disagree with that. Ultimately, if I look at my own life, especially in the when I was at, how do you say this, uh, the, the bottom of things, I was facing rock bottom. It actually gave me an opportunity to change things. It gave me an opportunity to grow, to just let go, to surrender to what was happening. And that changed my life. Many things that happened to me that were very traumatic or very painful actually learned, gave me an opportunity to grow. That doesn't mean that everyone is going to take that opportunity. When you see traumatic things happening, some people will rise, they will start to understand and they will grow, but there are people that will just fall apart. They will never get out of that. And it's up to us individually to make a decision how we're going to deal with this. And whether that is unconscious by completely shutting down, closing off or breaking down, or by making a decision to, to look at ourselves. We, it has to be done by ourselves to see that. And some people will not be able to do that, unfortunately. I do see, especially lately, a lot of people are waking up on, in a way that they understand that there's something wrong. So what's being used by the white hats now has an effect. It's not like massively waking up everyone, but I don't think everyone is capable of waking up. I think we need to let go of that notion that there will be people who won't be able to, to deal with that because ultimately this is a personal choice we, we all have to make, whether we want to look at ourselves, whether we want to take responsibility of ourselves. And there are going to be people that may still not be ready to take that responsibility or maybe still have to learn other lessons or other way of thinking or maybe even have to go deeper, maybe even more rock bottom than where they are right now. 
But I do think that especially in very um, bad situations, people can rise because of it. If you keep people in a very comfortable position, most of them will not wake up at all. I think if we were in a similar situation as five years ago, before everything that's happened, you wouldn't have woken up anyone. There were not that many people awake because of all these things happening now. It is a catalyst for certain people to wake up, but ultimately it has to do with dealing with our fear, with our emotions, with again, shadow work. That's why it's so important to deal with that. Because if you are not prepared to deal with your fear, your frustration, um, your anger, it will be used against you to manipulate you. You, If you're so fearful, then you will look outside of yourself. Then someone will need to save you. Then someone will need to make decisions for you. Because especially in fear, that's a very low vibration. It, it gives you tunnel vision. So you're not giving yourself uh, the power to seek other possibilities. Because fear limits people. Especially when you're fearful, it has an effect on your immune system, it has an effect on your mental state, your emotional, spiritual, it's a very low vibration. I know the dark energies love fear, they can easily feed of it, and it's a perfect way to manipulate people. So the most important decision we each and everyone will have to make is are we going to deal with these emotions in ourselves? Are we going to deal with our fear? Are we going to create safety within ourselves? That's why it's so important to connect with into your intuition, with God, understanding that you're part of source, you're part of God. We all are. And if you can really trust that process, it's not easy. It is certainly not easy. I've noticed that myself. Certain things are very tough to deal with certain emotions, fear, guilt, but it's important that we allow it by allowing it, by feeling through it, we won't have to avoid it. We won't have to walk away from it. We won't need security outside of ourselves. We will be able to be secure inside of ourselves. And it's so important that we do that and self-reflect, deal with it. And it's all a choice we have to make, each and every one of us, if we're capable of doing that, we'll be giving other people a chance to deal with that because we are all connected. So if our energy changes, it will have an effect on other people. Some people will be able like, hey, what's going on? They will be open for that. Some people will not. There will be people that are threatened by you, by your light, intimidated. They will avoid you. That's choices people make there's nothing you can do about it this is a personal choice a personal journey so to speak and this is really the most important thing we have to do so ultimately we cannot wake up other people people have to be ready to accept information ready to uh, look at themselves and some people have a longer path for that than other people and some people may not wake up in this lifetime that's a possibility as well but the most important thing is that we focus on ourselves, work on our own intuition, our own connection with God, our own energy, because that will give an opportunity for people to connect with that energy and also start uh, maybe asking questions, raising their own vibration. That is the most important part we can do. And it will have an effect on people, whether they like it or not. And some people will leave your life because they won't be able to handle it. And you will draw in, attract people that are like-minded and are working with towards their same goal into really uh, spiritually grow. So in a way, I disagree with what's been happening, uh, with what the uh, psychiatrist is saying, that this prolonged suffering has no effect whatsoever on people. It does have an effect. I know for myself, especially the past month, how much I have grown. I wouldn't have wanted to miss this because I really have a feeling that there's so much spiritually going on now that this is an amazing time. I do understand that people are in other situations, but we all have to make choices. But 
we are not capable of waking up other people. So do not try that. And I've mentioned this, of course, in my Dutch video as well. I'm glad that's not a possibility because if I was capable of waking up someone else, they would have the capacity to put me back into sleep as well, because then apparently I would have some kind of power over other people. I don't want that. I have enough, you know, the responsibility taking over myself. I do not want responsibility over other people. Each and every one of us will have to make a decision what we do and whether we do it on an unconscious level or a conscious level. You cannot force people to wake up or understand the information. You can just be open, work on your own energies. And if people notice something, they will come to you. They will start asking questions. So it's very important that we really step into our power, raise our energy in a way by just dealing with ourselves, feeling all these fears, all these anxiety that may come up, anger, frustration. But also, of course, if you uh, feel through it, you will feel more balanced because it's also important to take care, of course, about, you know, doing things that you enjoy doing. Very important. Take good care of yourself, protect your energy. If there are people around you that just don't feel right, leave them for what they are. See if you can, if it's impossible to avoid them, just make sure that you put up your boundaries and take care of yourself. That's really the only responsibility you ultimately have. Take responsibility for your energy, Take good care of yourself and then, of course, you will take care of others as well because we are all connected. I'd like to leave it at this and hope to see you in another video.